One, two, three, four. All right, and welcome back to It's Not a Sport, Season 3, Episode 8. So, first off, before I really uh, start this episode, uh, I wanted to take time to address the riot and the Black Life Ladder, uh, Matters movement because it affects pretty much all of us and uh, it affects me and affects the industry as a whole as well. Um, my thoughts on it is that it's... It, my thoughts are very complicated and I don't want to really voice them too much uh, on the show because the show is about gaming. It's not really about politics. But they are something that I think everyone should be aware of and why it matters and why we need to fight for human rights as a whole um moving on to the gaming side of it a little bit more a, a lot of companies have publicly come out and like donated like square uh, enix has donated um saying that they want you know donating funds to the movement same with uh, not Blizzard, but Treyarch, and this this one's weird. Um, Treyarch is also wanted to crack down on racism in Call of Duty, which when I think of racism in the gaming community, I think of Call of Duty, which is this always been that game where like rednecks and like I've never been called the N word. Uh, playing League of Legends, but I've been play uh, called the uh, the N word and racial slurs multiple times in Call of Duty. So it, that's it's kind of interesting to see like, uh, what are they going to do with that? Um, but it, it it's it's also uh interesting because. Uh, generally, the industry tries to stay out of politics and things like this. So seeing them take a stance on it is very... Um, I'm happy to see it. What I really want to see, uh, and I think from the games industry and just the entertainment industry in general, is represent representation of African Americans or people of color in video games. Because there really aren't any. Um, most games that you play, uh, it's it's white people. And it's hard, you know, I think growing up on it, you know, my parents always kind of, I think, pointed out. But it's hard not seeing yourself, especially in these games. That's why I think, like, Prototype 2 comes to mind. Because that protagonist was, you know, black or a person of color. Um... Barrett, even though he's like, you know, stereotype, he's kind of like maybe probably the best rep representation of black people in video games other than like sport games. Um, it's sad. I hope there's uh, more AAA, more developers kind of pushing for that overall because I think that will be healthier for everyone in the long run and everyone in the industry. So with that out of the way, um... Maybe I'll talk about it more on a later stream, but I think it's very complicated. And if I voice my opinion, there's just there's just certain things that I think I only have a certain point of view on that people won't agree with that are very very radical. Uh, we can leave it at that. So let's get in right into the show, into the game. That's what we're all here for, anyway. So uh, first off, in esports, there, there again, there isn't any esports. League, the league, league is down. Uh, I believe the Overwatch league is also down. Everything's down. Uh, no one's really playing. League of Legends has had and Riot. They've hosted a tournament of uh, basically just um, a fundraiser tournament for COVID. I believe is what it is. Uh, so that's cool that they did that. But other uh, than that, 
there's really no esports. So for games coming out this uh, year, uh, we have, or this month, we have Valorant launched. That came out June 2nd, so like a week ago. Um, and then we have the Elder Scrolls expansion that launched as well. The Outer uh, Worlds on the Switch came out. Uh, if we're looking at the end of uh, May stuff as well, which were big. Uh, the Bioshock collection, the Borderlands Legacy collection, XCOM 2 collection all came out on the Switch. As well as the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which is the remake from the Wii, also came out on Switch. So those are no noteworthy. Excuse me. Um, uh, also, probably the biggest release coming out later uh, in like a week from now, two weeks from now. Uh, the last was part two. So I'm looking forward to that. In terms of news, um, we don't have a lot. There's some there uh, that, you know, I saw on the web that there's a rumor I think that would be cool is that Bloodborne Remastered may come to Steam in Demon's Souls re uh, remake uh, for a PS, uh, PS5 exclusive. Um, I don't think these are true. They're just rumors, so take them with a grain of salt. And I bring them up because I, I've, I'd be happy to see them. Very happy to see that. But I don't think they're true just because we haven't heard anything about the Elder Ring, which was the Game of Thrones type game uh, that uh, they were making. Um, that they were making. And then they kind of said some like teaser stuff at last year's e3 and then we've heard absolutely nothing uh other kind of small those things square enix is pleased with uh final fantasy 7 remake sales it did very well uh you know to as expected um basically how it was reviewed and how i reviewed it it was it was very well received um and then we have valorant they had a new character and a new map along with the launch um so that's cool if you like that and then uh also apparently death stranding made enough profit to uh make a net or to secure a next title or next sequel for uh kojima which is good i like hearing that because i like the metal gear solid series and i haven't played death stranding but it, it was very oddly received so um those are just some small rumor things going around the internet uh also uh Taking note that this show is actually being recorded, so I actually have a face cam on, so you can go up on the YouTube and check that out if you want to actually watch the show, or just continue how you are, I'm assuming, if you're listening to it on SoundCloud uh, and the podcast version. Um, other than that, uh, we have a E3 schedule I kind of want to go over, that uh, uh, it's the unofficial E3 schedule, since again, if you listen to last week's show, E3 got replaced. Um, so we're going to go over that, and then we're going to get to the main topic. So the Summer Games Fest, we talked about it, runs May 12th at 12pm. Um, this is, you know, a month long, they kind of just been doing shows whenever, uh, so keep your eye out for that. Uh, then we have... The Wholesome Direct, um, and this runs on May 16th, so this already passed. Then we had the Sony PS5 Showcase. Now, this was supposed to happen last Thursday, but they proposed, uh, they proposed, uh, they canceled it, pardon me, because of the riots and the protests. Uh, same reason why I didn't feel like I, uh, wanted to do a show last week. So, um, they put it on hold. Uh, because of those movements going to go, currently going on, um, there has not been an update to when uh, they're going to do it. But I'm really waiting for this and I'm really excited for uh, when this is going to happen. The next June 8th, uh, we have the IGN Expo. I believe that's tomorrow uh, or today at the time, depending on when I upload this uh, show. Um, and that's to be decided. There's no time for that. Then, uh, Gorilla Collective on June 13th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, cool. Then we have the PC Gaming Show on June 6th. Generally June 6th, since these dates would be when E3 is happening, kind of. Uh, I think that happened yesterday, at the, uh, the time of recording this, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so I haven't really heard anything about this. 
but uh or any news from this but that happened and then the steam game festival uh or the steam summer sale i believe it got delayed it was supposed to happen earlier but that's running from june 16th to through uh through the 22nd so get your wallets ready for the steam summer sale uh cd project red uh says night city wire it has a june 15th at a, a date to be decided um this uh, is also you want to keep your eyes on just because we uh will probably get cyberpunk news uh i'm assuming this is where they come out and say the game has been delayed because of uh world issues so be prepared for that because we have had no cyberpunk news they haven't talked about whether it's delayed or not and whether it's still a uh, Set for September, I believe. So that's something to watch. Also, on June 18th, we have EA Play uh, Live 2020. This one, EA does their shows. Um, I'm probably some Apex news. Uh, I know, like all the battle royale seasons just started again. Um, you know, probably some fucking Sims news. Probably some uh, news about. I don't know, maybe a new Star Wars game. That's what we can really hope for. But that's that's pretty much it. Then Day of the Devs is June 22nd. Probably just about the small uh, dev indie studios. Sega New Game Plus Expo, June 28th at the 11th. Uh, Ubisoft uh, has their show on July 12th. That's really kind of late. That's interesting. Um... And that's probably going to be, you know, showing off the new Assassin's Creed, the new Watch Dogs, and they'll probably give us a Just Dance uh, show as well, like they always do. Um, and then Microsoft had their thing. They have another thing, it looks like, in July. So we have that to look forward to as well. So with that out of the way... Um, let's get in to our main topic. All right, so we got a great show for you this week. Um, I'm gonna talk about something a little different. I haven't done it in a while. Um, be prepared for later on. Uh, I didn't wanna do it right now because I felt like, again, with how times being as they are, um, I didn't want to focus heavily on a design show, and I want to do something a little light, it was something a little more fun. And so with that uh, idea, for this week's show, we're going to be talking about the big three. Um, and you may be thinking, the big three, what does that even mean? Well, I mean the big three of anime. Um, and, that, and those big three uh, basically drove the industry uh, to what they kind of are today. They're the big shonens of anime and manga uh, back in the early 2000s and that was naruto bleach and one piece and since then those shows have two of those sh two out of three have uh wrapped up and finished and their writers have gone on with their lives um same with uh their uh stories and the main characters so what happened? Bleach uh, kind of lost popularity and then it ended. Naruto, the uh, dude who wrote it, he said he didn't want to do it anymore. Um, so he kind of wrote an ending to like what happened with everyone, like an epilogue. And then his assistant, who was helping him with the original Naruto, took over and now he's writing Buruto. Um, One Piece uh, will never die. It continues to live on. And they're all great shows and have an impact on me growing up as a fan of anime. So why do I bring that up? Well, there's no more big three and there's no more of uh, real marketing value. Like they were there to as a marketing scheme to really push those three animes. And now that we've moved on, uh, the genre of, of anime as a whole has really changed, I think, uh, for the worst, honestly. We get really good, I think, good concepts, but not good stories because what really matters is concepts and it sells like fan fiction a lot, what the anime is now. And what you got to understand is that um, 
the industry is a business it's like any uh any entertainment industry so that's why things kind of end up the way they are but we've seen really good stories come to fruit and replace uh kind of those the, the big three or the big two that uh left um one of them just ended written by a, a, a female um writer uh demon slayer demon slayer to me it has one season the um, anime uh, Demon Slayer to me was a fantastic, uh, it was manga. It was very well written and it really hit here in my heart uh, a lot of scenes. I remember when I first started Demon Slayer, I could not put it down. I went over to sleep over at a friend's house to hang over with him. And uh, when we were going to bed, I was up reading chapters because it is really good. And I really highly recommend you kind of uh in, t in these current times check it out because it's a story about family and friendship really um uh, to give you the tldr about what demon slayer is about it is about uh, a boy um who loses his entire family to uh a de to a demon and they kill it and a demon are uh, people who have uh Super, you know, power is exactly what you think a demon would be. Think more Japanese demon than like a Christian demon, I would say. But uh, he uh, kills the entire family and his sister turns into a demon as well. So he goes uh, around uh, training, meeting people, uh, forging relationships, carrying on legacies, uh, part of the Demon Slayer core in order to turn his sister back into a human. And that's kind of the story. Um, it's it's a very it's a very good story. It's and I recommend uh, you uh, pick it up and read it or watch the anime if you can because the anime is also very well produced. Some other uh, stories that I think that also come up uh, from these new era, uh, they haven't really stuck with me too much, but I know that they are uh, very popular is um black clover and hero academia are really big ones that are at least of, of, of the shonen genre and um why i think they're hard to stick for me is because shonen's such a it's such a uh already defined um format you know there's so many tropes in that format that you uh they just get tedious i feel like um why i think uh one piece is going is because one piece is actually the one that defines those tropes as it's gone on for so long same with naruto and bleach they are the ones who defined it so now that like they're already defined um, it's hard to watch these shows, at least for me, because it feels like it's just not something, it's not new, it's just kind of uh, rehashed. Um, but there are some good ones, like I said, Demon Slayer is really good. Um, same with uh, The Promised Neverland. I'm still in the current uh, phases of reading it, but it's still like um, a very, you know, a story about family, uh, in heart um, and a journey and a struggle of these characters, you know, uh, having to survive in a cruel, cruel world. Uh, Demon, Sl Demon Slayer and The Promised Neverland are kind of, I guess you could say similar. Um, uh, Promised Neverland is about uh, a girl named Emma who uh, has a girl who's raised on a farm. And this farm turns out to be, uh, or is raised at an orphanage. And the orphanage turns out to be a farm for humans, and he's li and they're living in this demon world where demons eat human, and they turn out that they are the cattle, and it's about them escaping and their journey throughout this world. So that's a um, a really big one uh, that I think you should also check out um, because it's very I think how they solve problems in the uh, manga and in the anime. It also has one season, I believe, there's a second season is uh very well done the last one i want to mention that i think is worth uh noting there's there's a couple and i can do a whole show on this but i just want to talk about shonen and kind of the big three 
is Fire Force. Fire Force is uh, written by the same dude who did Soul Eater. It has a lot of um, similarities. At least you can you can tell once you see it. Um, there's also an anime of it, but it, it's very well done because everything, at least power wise, from uh, my view, every bur everybody's power has something to do with heat or fire, and just how the writer has expanded that as much as they uh, have is really impressive. So uh, that's definitely one to check out. Now, um, to wrap things up, and why I just want to talk about these big three in the shonen, and I think they're, it's kind of important to know about them when you're going into an anime genre, or just watch anime in general. Even if, like, uh, you've never seen Naruto, Bleach, or, or, or uh, One Piece, which I don't know how you haven't, uh, you definitely should check them out and understand why they're so popular. Because why I think they, su they succeeded, those three shows succeeded so much, is because even though vastly they're all different they're wrapped up in japanese culture and within our world you know within our entire the entire planet and each continent japanese culture is one of the most unique out of uh, any because when they are on that island throughout their history they were so isolated from the rest of the world before and they were just able to develop such a finite and just like fantastic culture um which kind of bit them in the ass later on down the lines of history but that's a different story um but that's why i think that uh these big three are, are so well developed because naruto um if you look at naruto uh, you may not know it, but a lot of those moves that they, uh, like the Sharingan moves that the writer uh, wrote are named after uh, Shinto gods, like Susuno and uh, Anmatsu. And that's also there in um, uh, Soul Eater, or not Soul Eater, pardon me, Fire, uh, Fire Force as well, where the big engine is called uh, An Anmatsu. I may be butchering that, but that's the sun god in Shinto uh, mythology. And that's Naruto, you know, it was about ninjas, you know, that's like super Asian Japanese. And then Bleach was about uh, sh Shirigami, which are uh, just the Japanese demons, essentially. And But it was not just that, it was also samurai as well. And then One Piece, uh, One Piece is a little bit more different, but right now the current arc is in an island that is kind of based off of Japan. And the... Uh, artistic style of it is are very impressive but one piece has always carried japanese values and their culture throughout its 20 year lifespan and it's also interesting because it mixes a lot of other cultures as well compared to the other ones and that's why i think one piece was and has been the most successful out of any of them but that's why i think uh these mangas are, are definitely ones to check out um, I hope this has just been like a, a really small show. Um, I'm gonna like right now, I think, uh, definitely in terms of COVID, I'll probably have a show maybe about anime and manga a little bit more in depth later, but I want to do something light. I want it to, uh, to do something a little bit fun and I want people to uh, enjoy themselves, uh, maybe get inspired to start up a new a series or kind of create their own new series with their own culture. Um, or just protest or do whatever you need to do because right now it's tough times and I want to do a light show. Um, so I wanted to go over my top mangas of all time because I think they are important and I think um, they show the values that I just said and you should definitely check them out, especially during current times because I hope they and uh, my show puts a smile on your face before we end. So the my top five is Tokyo Ghouls. It is about a boy who uh, is not so sure of himself. He meets a, a lady. Uh, she turns out to be a ghoul. Um, accidents happen and he's caught between both worlds, between the ghoul world and uh, the human world. Um, there's two books uh, or two series, Tokyo Ghouls and then Tokyo Ghouls Re. You can watch the anime as well, but be careful because there's uh, it does steer off the path at one point before getting back on the correct path. But I recommend you read it. Uh, it's a very good read.
Next up is JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. This one's pretty obvious. Uh, this one's been going on forever. Again, you can watch the anime um, up to part five, uh, which is one of the best parts, and it's best uh, partly uh, it's really well animated. I don't recommend skipping parts, even though you can. I don't recommend it, uh, and it may take a while, and it may get a, a lot to get used to. But reading it is uh, reading part five is probably decent. And then uh, the reason why I really bring it up is after part six, really, um, it gets really good. Really, really good. Like this dude, master of his craft. Um, um, part, uh, we're in part eight currently, Jojo Lion, I believe. But part uh, seven is one of, it's a fantastic part. Same with uh, eight and then six. Um, six gets a bad rep, but uh, if you understand why he did the ending that he did, it is very good. So check out JoJo. Next up, talked about it before, Naruto. Uh, Naruto grew up with me. Uh, I love Naruto. You know, I used to watch it every night, really late at night. It's a long show. Uh, there's a lot of episodes, and uh, or you can just read it. Um, but Naruto has a place in, I think, everyone's heart, and it's it's a defining uh, anime and manga and why things are the way they are today, um, at least in the shonen genre. So check Naruto out. Um, just make sure to skip filler episodes because they did things differently now that they uh, than they did now. Or they don't really do filler episodes anymore, which is they because they figured out a better system. But just Google filler episodes and make sure to skip it. Um, stay away from Buto. Stay away from Buto at all costs. Uh, right after Naruto, One Piece. Um, same reasons for Naruto. Uh, One Piece is a classic, classic. It is. Um, Naruto was a driving factor, but Nar but One Piece remains the driving factor on what Shonen and the Big Three are today. One Piece drives that industry as a whole and is drives pretty much the manga and anime industry as a whole because whatever you see in one piece trickles down to the other one so definitely check out one piece uh make sure to look up uh filler episodes and skip those uh next is demon slayer uh it's currently done the manga just like just finished like a couple weeks ago um at least um you know how we get it here in uh, the United States. Uh, so definitely check that one out. Um, it's a fantastic story. Uh, I, you know, I talked about it earlier. Um, there is one season of anime right now, uh, and they're supposed to have a um, movie, I believe, as well, which is kind of like just takes part of over like one arc so check that one out that one's good uh and that's my top five so far um then i had runner-ups uh full metal alchemist uh is a classic one um it's on netflix if you want to watch it uh is remained a classic also written by a female writer um it's about two brothers who uh go on a journey to reclaim uh what they lost um which is uh, their body after they did a uh, an attempt to bring their mother back and failed. It is a classic. Uh, moving on to more classic, Akira. Akira is a real, real um, classic anime, uh, especially during these times because it's it's set in the future. I believe it's set in uh, twenty twenty right now. So uh, reading Akira. Uh, or just watching the movie is something I think you should do because it is real nice. Next up, uh, The Promised Neverland. I talked about it before. Great story, great shonen. It's long, I believe. I believe because I kind of skipped ahead. It may be concluding. I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, definitely check that one out. And then last but not least, we have Soul Eater uh, slash Fire Force. I think Fire Force... Uh, uh, check out Soul Eater first, and then you can watch uh, Fire Force. Soul Eater is complete. It's been done. Um, I believe it's also on Netflix. And then Fire Force uh, 
is brand new with the second season on the way. Now, of course, I have a lot more manga to uh, talk about, but we're kind of running out of time. Uh, one honorable mention, like honorable, is Records of Ragnarok. I started reading this real recently, and I'm, I've fallen in love with it. It's about um, humanity fighting for their life against uh, gods of all pantheons in what is, of course, Ragnarok. So check that one out. Um, that's going to conclude this week's show. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you're staying safe out there. Uh, thank you for listening. Oh. All right. So thanks for listening to this week's episode of It's Not a Sport. Uh, make sure to check us out all out on our soundcloud that's where we upload our podcast each week and then we have our videos up on youtube and that's where all of our past seasons are as well check out our website it's not a sport.com um then check out our uh instagram it's not a sport to you uh, i hope you guys are doing what you can out there Summer's just starting, so get out, create something, do something good for yourself because now's the time to do it. We got to start showing a little bit more appreciation for uh, not just ourselves, but everyone out there as well. This has been your host, Salty Waffles, signing off, and I hope you guys are happy.